Welcome back to our show, coming to you this week from the Northern Ag Expo in Fargo, North Dakota. One of the main seminars at the Expo was the Grain Marketing Outlook. I currently have two panelists here with me, Randy Martinson and Frayne Olson. So guys, as we wrap up 2022, what were some of the surprises we saw in the grain markets? Well, I guess to start with, when we started the spring, we were really concerned about planted acreage as well as yield potential. Um, not only here, in the, especially in the Northern Plains, but also across a, a pretty big part of the growing, growing region in the U.S. And obviously the, the crop turned out to be a lot better than we anticipated. Uh, harvest went a lot smoother than I think anybody expected, especially here in the Northern Plains. And so when we look at total production numbers, they came in, you know, a, a kind of an average size crop. We were right at trend line yield for corn and soybeans, a little bit below for, for uh, wheat, but again, primarily because of the winter wheat area. Uh, but we, we had a good production year. And, and the question now, of course, is what, where do we go on the demand side? Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, we were surprised that we were able to even harvest the crop uh, and be done by uh, the end of October with corn, especially with this late planting that we had. And it was a good crop for the most part in most of the areas. Now, we did see, of course, the Western Corn Belt did have some production issues with the drought that kind of continued to ravage down in that area. But for the most part, uh, you know, it was a lot better end to a year that, than what we were expecting. As we look back in the year of 2022, what were some of the driving forces that really impacted the grain markets? A lot of it revolved around the political aspects, uh, things outside of agriculture rather than necessarily what was going on within agriculture. A slowdown in China demand as well, but you know, because of COVID, not importing as much uh, soybeans or corn, I think added a little bit to that uh, trouble with the U.S. market. And that's, we're kind of seeing that yet with our slower corn exports than we anticipated. So as we're sitting in the last month of 2022, how are the grain markets currently looking? Pretty decent shape. I would say that we probably have hit the holiday doldrums a little sooner than normal. We probably are going to see a quiet uh, December. One thing is that we do know the market is going to be very reactive to any kind of special news or some event that happens, you know, like that missile striking pole, and we saw it shot the markets up right away. So I think that's something that the market is very sensitive because of our tight stocks. So as we head into 2023, what are some of those possible risks that producers could face? You know, I think on the corn side, you know, it's our exports. You know, right now our export market ha or our exports haven't been good in corn. We're running about 50% of what we were last year at this time. So I think that's going to be the biggest pitfall for corn going forward is that it's likely USDA is going to lower our export uh, estimates, which will increase our stocks, which that uh, could be a little bit of a black cloud over the head of, of corn going forward. And then, you know, with whether South America's production is going to fall, that will help dictate where our exports do come into play. But right now we're trailing and we got a, it's going to be a long road to hoe to get back to normal. Yeah, and on, on soybeans, kind of a similar story. Uh, we're relying very heavily, obviously, on the Chinese market to, to pull off a lot of the U.S. soybeans. They're the most dominant buyer. Um, this, the soybean buying habits right now from China are really kind of a wait and see. Um, they are buying from the U.S. I think we'll continue to have some export sales of soybeans into the U.S., from the U.S. into China. However, um, they're really buying hand to mouth. They're really only filling what they need, anticipating a very large crop coming out of Brazil. And of course, once that crop starts harvest and they're able to get some of those new crop beans into the export terminals and into the facilities, I think we're gonna see U.S. export sales to China drop off very dramatically. So farmers from the soybean standpoint have a pretty tight window to try and get the rest of their old crop marketing done, potentially get some new, new crop marketing done as well into the 2023 season. So I'd, I'd be watching soybeans pretty carefully for some opportunities. Thank you two so much for your insight. Randy Martinson and Fran Olson. Thanks for watching Ag Week TV on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday.